Hi, I'm uh, Alvin Ang, Professor of Economics at the Ateneo de Manila University and also Director of its Center for Economic Research and Development. Today, I'm going to share with you some basic ideas on economics that can be very useful for investment purposes. I call this uh, series Everyday Economics. Today, we will talk about the role of economics in our money behavior. I wonder if any one of you have seen this uh, money, this uh, bill, it's a 100,000 peso bill. I've always asked my students if they, any one of them has this or is this true or fake? In reality, this is a true printed money printed in 1998 to celebrate the 100 years of Philippine independence. Unfortunately, as of July 2018, this has been demonetized. So the only place you can see this is at the lobby of the BSP. Now, why, I'm, why did I start with looking at the 100,000 peso bill? Well, as money goes larger, the amount goes bigger, people start to behave differently. But I'd like to bring us to the point that every day we make decisions that really has very basic economic reasoning. So a large amount of money can change your behavior, but on a daily basis, we actually do a lot of decisions using economic reasoning. For instance, many people will have a problem, how will I go to work? How will I go to school? How will I go to do anything today? I can take a tricycle, I can walk, I can take the Jeep, taxi, grab, or drive my own car. Most problems that, uh, most problems that I have encountered in the past uh, when I was still working at the corporate sector, and even today as I teach in the university, is that people have has a problem what to eat for lunch. And it's also using some kind of reasoning and basis for doing so. Now that the market is weakening, people start to ask, is it time to buy stocks now? So as you see, the level of, uh, the level of economic reasoning changes, but still you need some sort of basis to do so, such a decision. And as you are watching this uh, webinar this time, is it worthwhile listening to Dr. Ang? So that's also going to give you some kind of uh, basis for doing so. So I will walk you through some basic economic principles that we overlook, but actually are very powerful in our decision-making processes. Consider just going into the net right now and buying something. Just thinking about it, you will go through a gamut of apps that could help you make that decision, right? And if we go out of the net right now and walk out the streets, this is what you will see. The issues that affect us every day. And it requires that we have some kind of uh, economic reasoning. For instance, last year, at this time of the year, Inflation was 6.4%, but the other day we just heard that it was down to 2.4%. Why is it when prices are rising, people complain? When it is going down, nobody cares. And as, as we speak right now, the continuing problems of Metro Manila in many places in the Philippines is this, Carmageddon. Anywhere you go, there is like confluence, of people wanting to go and do things faster and quicker. The reality is uh, we are all faced with the problems of scarcity. We cannot have everything that we need or want. Lagi tayong kukulangin kahit anong gusto natin gawin. Because that is the reality of people having different needs at different wants. I'd like the, I like the good book saying this, no? We want to have to want to get the basic, the pinaka basic, and yet we never seem to have enough. So that's why when we try to do and understand economics, ayon na natin yung textbook meaning niya. 
ito kasi yung natutunan natin when we were in school that it is talking about just simply scarce resources and balancing it with needs and wants. But in reality, uh, marami siyang, kung yun lang ang basis natin, it's talking about certain limitations uh, that cannot be addressed by any, not, any law passed by Congress because it's defined by natural laws. Therefore, ang mas mahalaga and more important is to law, know economics in a different way context, lalo na for investments. This is what is important for investors, that we know what is our incentive and how do we make these choices, and what is coordinating the different decisions and activities of people investing. Okay, So it is important, therefore, to know how data is organized, how things are implemented, and how information is flowing. Kapag ka only a few people know about it, di ba sa stocks, kung sinong una, yun ang kumikita. At kahit na ano mga investment, eh, that's why the role of information is very critical. So the key idea is that any choice we make will either have benefits or cost. Kahit na i-apply mo yan sa investment at kahit na sa love life at kahit na anong parte ng buhay. They will, even, they will always have benefits or costs. Unfortunately, the consequences does not lie when, that, when we make the decision now. The consequences lie after the decisions are made. And if we have already made that choice, we cannot change the past. So this general principle is actually the basis of uh, economic decision making. Kailangan, we need weigh natin yung benefits and costs. Um, sometimes when we do investments, our problem is we rely on people's advice. But really, kahit na mag-advise sila, ang nagagawa ng decision tayo. So therefore, the decision is ours and therefore the information and the basis for that information is also our responsibility. We cannot always uh, blame or uh, put it on somebody else's shoulders. So I'd like now to go to some key economic principles. And I know this will be very helpful sa inyo, not only in investing, but in doing your everyday activity. Uh, principle number one, we all face trade-offs. Hindi po ba? So kanina, sinanong ko kayo. There are um, trade-offs. Pag pinili ko na ang pork chop for lunch, pag pinili ko pa ang uh, lechon, parang... Uh, ma-overwhelm na ako sa meat. No? So, I have to make some trade-offs. Also, while you are listening to me now, there is probably a trade-off. Should I listen to Dr. Ang or should I go and now finish my laundry? There's a trade-off na kailangan nating gawin. And there is really no such thing as a freelance. No? Kolong po ito ng boss ko, si Dr. Shell Habito sa Inquirer, nakikita yung title niya, No Freelance. Ano ba yung sabihin ng No Freelance? Kapag ba nilibre ako ni Vanessa ng lunch, sabi niya, papakainin kita ng lunch ngayon? Ako mong sasagot, libre ba talaga yon? Many people confuse free as only in terms of money. But if Vanessa asks to bring me to, a lunch, to lunch for free, it's not really free because I have to spend time. So if I want to sleep at lunch time instead of eating, very expensive yung mawawala. Malaki yung mawawala sa akin. Lalo na kung kulang ang tulog. So therefore, the choice of one lets go of the other. And that's why this is where all people at the back of our minds are actually making some estimates or computation of what we are going to lose. Okay, so wala talagang free lunch dahil it's not only money, it also involves time. Second principle is the, that there is a cost to every choice made. And that is what we know as opportunity Cost. So, babalikan ko yung trade of example kanina. When I give, gave up my uh, nap time, that is the opportunity cost to eat lunch for free. Okay? So, what is that opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is really what matters the most to any one of us. For example, this, this is a chart showing you uh, sorry, a graph, table pala, table, sorry, showing you different 
choices that we have to make, right? A business can buy a new computer versus modern office chairs, okay? Minsan illogical sa tingin natin, but the business prefers new computers which can make their jobs faster and they can make do with old chairs with that. We can hire new workers or buy high-tech machineries that will not need people. Or instead na mag-party, ibigay na lang bonus. Those are opportunity costs. And the decision is based on who or what is mat what matters the most to the one making the decision. So ganun din sa government, may ganyan ding decision. Ganun din sa mga tao, iba-iba. So for, ex for instance, the price of a movie right now may be equivalent to a price of a t-shirt. So you are making a choice. Mas mahalaga ba yung movie sa'yo o yung t-shirt? So if they are priced the same, what matters the most will be your opportunity cost. Ganun din. May mga estudyante, may mga tao na nag-work. No? They, they defer working on a project or a deadline now kasi kaya naman nilang habulin at the end of a week or the, two days before the deadline. Ang mangyayari niyan, walang mga tulog yan. At the time of the exam, walang maaalala. Kasi binigay lahat doon sa in opportunity cost lahat agad in this na dapat noong pa pinag-prepare. Principle number three, people are rational. Uh, in the market, those of you who are investing, to ay ang um, basis ko yata yung lahat ay nag invest We are thinking that all of us are systematic and purposeful in decision making. We are assuming that since we are all rational, we will behave accordingly or predictable ang behavior natin. And when we are rational, we order possibilities consistently. For instance, Kung may bibili ka ng bagong cellphone, siguro ganito ang gagawin mo hierarchy. You like Apple over Samsung. So, kung ang choices mo lang, Apple over Samsung and Samsung, Apple ang bibili mo. Pero kung walang Apple, Samsung lang at ang Huawei ang available, ang pipiliin mo, Samsung, kasi yun ang prefer mo, second to Apple. Pero, kung Apple na at Huawei, kung logical person ka, Apple pa rin ang pipiliin mo. The irrational person will choose Huawei. And I advise you, pagka ganun ang taong kausap mo, don't talk to that person. Because no decision will ever be made correctly and consistently. Dahil pa bago-bago. Principle number four. Rational people decide on the margin. This is one of the most interesting thing, things that we see every day. And yet, people skip it and say, natural lang yun. This is actually economic reasoning. Yung marginal thinking, no? yung tinatawag na. Yung kaunting diferensya. For instance, when you go to a buffet at ikaw ay kakain, remember the first plate? It's full. The second plate, plate three-fourths. The third plate, sabi mo, pahinga muna. What is happening? There is no more marginal benefit to eat some more. That means, nagdi-design tayo na mura yung buffet kasi iniisip natin mas marami tayong makakain but actually, yun din ang iniisip nung gumawa ng buffet. Alam niya na hindi mo kayang kainin lahat ng nilagay niya doon. So both ways, we are deciding on the margin. Another interesting uh, application of marginal decisions a lot of people after college wants to get a higher education like masters or MBA. Ano may purpose? In reality, hindi naman nila gusto mag-aral eh. Gusto lang nila ma-promote. At pag na-promote sila, may marginal increase sa income. Di ba? And what do managers think when they increase production? Managers increase production kasi pagka kailangan na nilang magdagdag ng factory, kailangan ng additional space. And this is what uh, is surprising to many people. Why can airlines offer lower pay, lower fares? Bakit piso fare ang isang airline? Bakit ang isang airline kaya niyan 10 peso fare? What is happening there? It is really because the airlines are actually average cost pricing. So in a particular 
uh, seating capacity, let's say, of a A320, yung usual air, airplane sa Philippines, the airfare uh, would average, let's say, siguro mga 1,500 Manila to Cebu in reality. And yet, why can they offer 1 peso? They can only actually offer it for a few seats. Diba pagka airline uh, seat sale, you will be surprised that at even at 12.01 midnight, wala na yung seat na gusto mo. Kasi out of 200 or 300 seats in a plane, only 10 seats are for 1 peso. That is how the marginal decision making of the airline is made. So now, what is the basis of rational decision? We think that nakakarami tayo because the marginal benefit should be equal or at least greater than the marginal cost. Diba? So even if we know that if we buy things cheaper at 168 in Divisoria, bakit hindi tayo doon bumibili? Kasi alam natin na hindi lang yung price ang kasama doon. Well, recently clear, mal malinis na yung daan, pero still, it's the comfort of shopping and buying things uh, at our time and, and convenience, not necessarily just the price. We make decisions based on who we are, what we like, and what we want to have or accomplish. So subjective yon. So individually, that is a lot uh, of difference for different people. Two people wanting to eat lunch will have two different choices. Kaya mahirap po na magkaroon ng common decisions. But what is common to all of us is the incentive we face. Diba? Ano ba yung incentive ng lunch? Pag hindi ka kumain ng lunch, whether ano man yung pipiliin mo, pag hindi ka kumain, gutom ka, at yung ibang tao sumasakit ng ulo. So the incentive is to eat lunch. That is the objective. But to make, to choose what lunch, what to eat for lunch is subjective. And therefore, that is the most powerful uh, element in our decision-making process, yung incentives, okay? So what is your incentive in watching this video right now? Okay, so ano ba yung makukuha mo out of this? So there must be something and that you can use for your future decision-making, okay? Interesting. Uh, Ang dami na pong ginawang solution, for instance, to ease traffic, Bakit hindi natin gawing incentivize instead na parusahan yung mga nagbabiolate ng traffic? Kasi pinaparusahan lang natin yung nagbabiolate. Paano naman yung sumusunod? So if halimbawa for ngayon 5 years ng license, wala ka man lang ni isang uh, violation, dapat bigyan ka ng discount pag nag-renew ka. Hindi ba incentive yun? In the same manner, halimbawa, if you apply it into the market, when you keep on buying the right stocks, ano nangyayari? your profit or your income from investment goes higher. So that is incentivizing you to judge correctly in your investments. At pag nagkakamali ka, okay lang yun. Kasi ibig sabihin, it's teaching you to be very careful in how you make your decisions. So incentive is really encouraging you to act for or against something. But it requires rule to operate. So dapat malinaw yung mga rules. For example, which of the following rules will make or encourage people to work harder and produce more at their jobs? Diba? If you look at these choices, most of the time, the best decision is based on an incentive that will give you the most. So the most here is workers who receive 50% of all the money made on sales of items produced by the firms will make that person work harder. Okay? Kesa naman yung equal pay it no matter ma how much work is done and produced. We are all made better off by trading. This is why uh, lahat po tayo may kanya-kanyang specialty. We have different courses offered in school, we have different professions, and we have different things that we do. That means we are all specialized in doing something, and that is what we do better. Dapat we focus on what we do better. Consider those people who are trying to multitask. If you try to cook and clean and wash the clothes or, or, or do laundry at the same time, most likely, may isa doon na hindi maayos mong nagawa. Because in reality, we can multitask but we cannot do the, all the three things at expert level because we are only expert at one or two things. Kaya lumalabas yung mga 
outsourcing or insourcing. So in the same manner, kailangan din na may alam tayo kahit pa paano. We can outsource a lot of things, but we should be able to know why they are doing or what, why they are happening the same in that manner. So for example, in trading, we are actually doing it ourselves, but we should know in general of the principles who are, how trading operates. Kaya mahalaga yung tinatawag na exchange. No? So if you're able to do well in what you are doing in your profession, you will earn more so that you can buy the things that you cannot do yourself. So example, ha, ito simple lang. When you open a business, let's say ngayon maraming tao want to go and open a business. Let's say nagkaroon ka ng sandwich business. You purchase a stall with all the requirements in it and you start with two people and you pay them 500 a day. This is how your business will look like for a month. Your fixed cost is about 18,000, meaning kuryente, uh, ingredients, etc. And the cost is 15,000. Binibili, binibenta mo yung sandwich at 250 na at 100 pesos and you produce 250 sandwiches. And so a total of 500 sandwiches is produced a month which is about 50,000 pesos but your cost is about 48. Okay bang business yon? In a month you earn about 2,000 pesos with all of these uh, efforts. Most people will think 2,000, ano yung return yan pagka compute natin? It's less than uh, 10%, right? So most likely, iisipin mo, eh kung ganun din lang pala, maglalagay. Ilalagay ko na lang sa treasury bills yung pera ko. But you decided to take on a higher risk. You hired two more people. Mas madami sigurong tao, mas madami silang maipoproduce na sandwiches. Pero dito sa table natin, nakita natin, when you added two more people, the production becomes less. Mas komonte. Di ibig sabihin, kung i-compute ko to, mas lumaki yung cost ko na ngayon kesa sa aking uh, revenues. So, sometimes, pag nag invest ganito yun, ano? dapat alam mo yung capacity mo. Hanggang saan ko ba kayang magbumili at magdagdag? Baka naman, Tama na muna and gives me a chance to pause and think. Because there is such a thing called the law of diminishing returns. So katulad ng lecture na to na napapakinggan mo, nung una excited ka, that is the most productive part. Umaakyat pa yan. So habang nag-uusap tayo at nakikinig ka sa akin, nabobore ka na. Pababa ng pababa na yung interest. Kaya kailangan in a few more minutes... One minute to be exact, I have to end. Otherwise, there is nothing that you will learn in the next one minute. So that is the law of diminishing returns, applicable to business, to family, to whatever you do. Pati sa pagkain, pati sa buffet, laging merong limit ang pwede nating i-absorb at ang pwede nating gawin. So that's it for today. Thank you.